Hey church, Pastor A here, and we're going to go to Hebrews chapter 1 verses 1 through 5. I want to start with reading this verse. The sun is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. I want to start there. I I want to let you know that the brightest source is the Son of God, the Son of Light. Now, I have something. See this? See this flashlight? Would you not say that, whoops, would you not say that these batteries are important? It's an important source to this flashlight for us so we can use it. So this flashlight is an important light and let's just hope that I put them on correctly because last time they were not in and I don't know why this flashlight wants to fight me every single time this is happening. Hold on one second. It's going to work. Anyway, it's like, oh, wow. Here we go. Now, if I put them in, please, let's hope I put them in after all that. But yes, the light works, right? It's a good source for us so we are able to see. Okay, all right, I have something else for you. What about this bottle of water? Would you not say that this bottle of water is an essential source for us to be hydrated? Would you not say for us to be refreshed? Would you not say that for us to, maybe not with this bottle of water, but just water in general, to cleanse our bodies, that you feel all good, like when you jump in the pool, it feels good, it feels refreshed? Would you not say this is a pretty good, you know, source that we need that that in our lives? Okay, so what does that have to do with what I'm talking about? Well, this this is what I'm this is what I'm gonna tell you. Okay, you ready? Okay, I'm here to tell you about the ultimate light source. I'm here to tell you about the ultimate well. There's no energizer bunny that can outrun the source of Jesus' power. Can I get an amen on that? And there's no spring of water or well that can flow through the that can flow like the flow of the living water of Jesus Christ. Give me an emoji for Jesus in the church chat. Come on now. Come on now. I'm here to talk to you about Jesus. Bring him back to basics. We all need Jesus in our life today. You see, earlier this week, I forgot my Jesus source. Oh yeah, I did. I forgot all power and love. And I pulled from, gosh, I hate to admit this to y'all, but I pulled this from the Audrey source. You know, the part of your brain that thinks you know all the answers. Oh yeah. When your head is spinning so fast, asking questions and giving answers that to you sound logical. But in actuality, they're not. And if I was to ask somebody, they would tell me, girl, you need to relax. And actually I did ask three people and that's pretty much what they told me to. You see, I was so obsessed with my own source of wrongness that I didn't remember until Friday, seriously, Friday, that I have the ultimate source in Jesus in my life. I just needed to invite him in and lean into him. Seriously, God's word tells us in verse three that Jesus is the exact representation of God. So why did I not look to him first? because I was too busy spinning in my own brain. Yep. Well, Jesus, now hear me. Jesus is heir to all things. Now that's what we just read. He's heir to all things, not some things, all things. Jesus is the radiance of God's glory. He shines out who the Father is in him. So when was the last time you show, you shined out? of who Jesus is in you. Ooh, let's think about that. Jesus is the exact representation of God's nature. Jesus is the exact likeness of God. He upholds all things by word of his power. Jesus made purification for all our sins. Come on, he died for us. He was sacrificed and he died for us and then he rose again so we are forgiven and that we, can have eternal life with him. Hallelujah. 
So, wow, so much more to read about Jesus in the book. We just got to pick up the Bible. Oh, I was forgetting the spinning in the moment. But once I reached out for help, I began to calm down. I stopped putting the pressure on myself. And you see, no one else was doing that, but I was. In the book of Hebrews, the writer is telling the Jews who believed and followed Christ not to waver in their faith. You see, there was so much persecution going on and Judaism was approved by Rome, but but not Christianity. And the writer is saying, don't go back to the old covenant because Jesus is the new covenant. Stop right there. Okay. So what does that have to do with you? Is there anyone that is struggling now? Anyone that misses the things you used to do before you found Jesus? Maybe you're asking yourself, it's too hard to be Christian. It's easier back in the day when I used to you know, fill in the blank for you. I'm sure we have a variety of things. I know I do. But back in the day, you know, was my life peaceful? Was there true peace in your life? Or only when you were numbed out by the food, the drink, the drug, the doubt, the confusion, the arguing, the controlling, etc., etc. You know, the book of Hebrews has the word better 13 times in it. And do you know the writer is saying is better Jesus. J-E-S-U-S. Jesus is better than the prophets. Jesus is better than the angels. Jesus is better than Joshua. Just to name a few verses. The first three verses of Hebrews shows us and sets forth the high and holy theme which is maintained through the entire book. Immediately, it is demonstrated that Jesus Christ is superior to the prophets and the men who are held in the highest esteem by the Jewish people and who had ministered by giving Israel God's word. Come on, church, today, remember who Jesus is in your life. And if you don't know, reach out to the pastors and elders and the deacons and we'll help you. We will so help you today, church. Jesus, we know this by seeing the miracles and who he associated with and how he treated people through love. We are called to love each other. And we, and we need to speak. We need to share. We need to love. I mean, when was the last time we spoke about, wait a minute, I said, just said that wrong. Remember the last time, sorry. Remember the last time we spoke and we spoke about the woman, the no-name woman who reached out to Jesus' cloak because she just knew if she could reach out and touch his cloak, that she would be healed. That faith. Well, today I'm asking you to seek out the source. Seek it out. Seek out that source of refreshment in the living water of Jesus Christ. The newness of his love for you. Share it with the world around. It's so simple how to share it. You, when you go to Publix or wherever it is you shop, smile at somebody. Let somebody in line in front of you. Thank the bag person. Thank the people. You know, don't be cutting your eyes at them and stuff because they're going down the wrong aisle. You know, I've done it, so I had to stop myself. But I'm just saying, we have things going on in our world today, but we don't have to react to those things. We need to remember to respond in the way that Jesus Christ would want us to respond. In that character of Jesus, we are to be loving and kind and thoughtful and give grace to people. Do you know how much grace that we're given that God gives us? Oh my gosh, we need to give grace to so many people. But I'm here to tell you that it, it will give someone a seed. You could be planting a seed that you're not even aware of just by being kind. Just by having that ultimate source of Jesus inside you. And now you're responding by love towards someone. 
even if you're like in the middle of having the biggest argument ever, you stop, you take a moment and a breath and you say, let's not do this right now. I'll be right back and give it like 10, 15 minutes and go back and speak respectfully. I don't know why I was just supposed to say that. I guess somebody's having that happening, but you don't have to you don't have to do what you used to have to do. You don't have to go back to where you used to be. The Remember, we talked about in this chapter, the author is telling us we don't have to go back to what used to be comfortable. Let's be in the newness of Jesus Christ in our life. Let's have the faith and let's have the ability to be able to change those old patterns. I mean, if you're going to talk to somebody at your house, why not do it without the phone while you're scrolling? You know what I mean? Like really pay attention and relearn what it's like to have a relationship with that person in your life, with your family members. Hey, how about this? Why don't you take a minute and why don't you relearn and have a deeper relationship with Jesus and reading the book of Hebrews. Hello, that's your homework. I just want to let you know that family, I love you. And I know that you all have the power source of Jesus in your life. And just beam out, regardless to where you are. If you're on Zoom at work, wherever you are, take that light source and just allow yourself to just love and have that faith in Jesus that your day, however it was going, is going to be a lot better now. I love you, church family, and you all, as my dove mom would say, have a happy God day.